the Red Sea parts. And this is an amazing thing. The waters stand up. The Bible even says there was a wall of water on both sides, and they walked on dry land. It was not even wet. This is an amazing miracle that God did, right? So three days after the Passover is when this happened. Three days after Passover. When was Jesus crucified? Passover. What day was this? The 17th day when they made it to the other side of the Red Sea. And it was the dawning of a new day. And what day was that? The 17th day. And why is that important? It was three days after Passover, my friend. Jesus rose from the dead three days after Passover. This 17th day is an amazing day, and you're going to see more of it. Watch this. This is amazing. Here we go. So the sun was rising. It was a dawning of a new day when they made it to the other side of the Red Sea, and they sang the song of Moses. They were worshiping God in this song. You're going to see it. So what day was it when they were singing this song? The 17th day of Nisan, of the Jewish calendar. This is amazing. So watch this. We know that Jesus, right, was raised from the dead, right? On what day was it? Oh, the 17th day. Like the dawning of a new day, my friend. It's so awesome. He was raised from the dead. That that stone was rolled away just like the water was rolled away. And the children of Israel walked through to the promised land. They were saved. It was a whole new beginning. They would never see the Egyptian, those Egyptians again coming after them. And it was the dawning of a new day as Jesus rose from the dead. Now, let's go into Noah's story because there's a tie-in here in the Old Testament. This is amazing. So when was Noah? When, when did this all happen with him? Well, first, let's look at 1 Peter chapter 3, and Peter makes a tie-in with a typology with Noah and uh, being saved in Jesus and, and the good news about Jesus Christ, the Messiah. He says, God kept waiting in the days of Noah during the construction of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were brought safely through the water. Corresponding to that, baptism now saves you. So he's showing how baptism is shown in that that whole story of Noah, right? But he says, not the removal of dirt from the flesh, but an appeal to God for a good conscience, having a clear, clean conscience, right? Through the resurrection, how? Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's how you get a clear, clean conscience, by believing and trusting in him who was raised from the dead. So what did the ark do? It rested where? On Mount Ararat. And what does Mount Ararat mean? Ararat means the curse reversed. Oh, wow. The curse is reversed. Like we know that Paul even talked about Jesus being on that tree and how it was the curse tree and the curse was reversed through Jesus. It was brought to us through Adam, right? But then he said the second Adam, using typology, types and pictures of Jesus in the Old Testament, he said that the curse was reversed. (laughs) This is amazing, you guys, how God put all of this together, is it not? So let's keep going in this. So Mount Ararat means the, the curse is reversed, and this is amazing. So watch this. So when was that? When did the ark rest on the mountaintop of Ararat? The 17th day of that same month. It was the seventh month, which was changed the first, same same time of the year, exactly. The 17th day, the ark rested on the mountaintop. Wow. (laughs) And Noah means what? Rest. The name Noah means rest. This is so good. God is so good, you guys, how he put all of this together. So stand by. And see the salvation of the Lord, Moses said to the children of Israel, which he will perform for you today. Isn't that awesome? And what is that salvation? Here it is, you guys. Here it is. 
Jesus said, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Rest. Jesus said that. He wants to give you rest, my friend, and peace deep within your soul. Being content deep, deep down in your soul. You may go through hard times as a Christian. You will go through hard times as a Christian. But deep, deep down, there's this joy that can never be taken away because God gave it to you. And Jesus says it right here. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. He gave those children of Israel rest when they walked through on dry land to the Red Sea. They were scared, but they walked through and they saw their enemies crushed behind them in the Red Sea. And they had rest when they were at the other side. And God gave that to them. And they sang the song of Moses. And it was amazing, you guys. So Jesus says, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. That's his promise to you, my friend. He has that for you. So if you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ, can you think of any reason right now why you wouldn't give it your life to him? To, to surrender your life to the one who created you and everything in the universe, the earth, everything. He loves you. He came and he died on that cross for you because the wrath of God had to be satisfied. He's a just God and that justification had to happen. So all the sins of the world had to be paid for and Jesus willingly came down from heaven. He was born as a baby, as a human, and as God both, but born as a baby by the Virgin Mary. And then 33 years later, he died on that cross. He hung on that curse tree for you and for me to reverse the curse. But he paid for it and died on that cross. He shed his blood for you. And then in three days, three days, the 17th day of Nisan, (laughs) he was raised from the dead and he is alive today, my friend. If you would like to believe in him and become a child of God, you can do that right now. He's a simple prayer away. Stop what you're doing and just say this prayer. You are praying to God, not to me, but you, you will be praying to God right now. Would you like to do that? Would you like to be born again as a new person in God? We'll repeat these words after me. You're praying to God. Here we go. Dear God, I know that I'm a sinner and I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me of my sin. I believe that Jesus died on the cross. I believe he shed his blood for me. I also believe that in three days he was raised from the dead and he's alive today. I choose to follow him as my Lord and Savior from this day forward. And I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, my friend, amen. Heaven rejoices over one who turns to God, and that's you. So congratulations, my friend. It's amazing, isn't it? God is so good. He loves you. Hey, I'm going to be preaching um, a message called Road to Emmaus. How we see Jesus in all the Old Testament at my local church, Dungeness Community Church in Squim, Washington. That's Dungeness Community Church in Squim, Washington. This will be on April 7th, Sunday, April 7th. And you can watch it on their, uh, on their YouTube channel live if you want. And, uh, and I hope that you will and comment on your thoughts. And uh, God bless you. Hey, don't forget to hit this playlist right here, How to Find Jesus in the Old Testament.